Welcome to Omaha, Nebraska, guys. Where this time around we have a brand new stadium, but there is some same old, same old quality to this year's CWS. South Carolina is back, of course, last year's champ for the second straight year. You have the Florida Gators and you have a few newbies. Vanderbilt's making their first ever appearance. So of the eight teams, three hail from the SEC East. Then you have the plight of those Texas A&M Aggies. Their first trip since 1999. Yeah, they're glad to be here, but they're not just happy to be here. We've been that way for the last month. Our back's been against the wall. We've had to fight to continue to play, and I don't think this group's going to be satisfied to, to just be here. They're going to, when they step between the lines on Sunday night at 6 o'clock, they'll be ready to play. It's great to, you know, to get to the College World Series. That's the ultimate goal, but uh, there's another one on top of that, and that's definitely winning it. You know, you're not only here just to be here, be around Omaha, and, you know, see Ameritrade. You know, you want to be here and win the whole thing. We don't need to change a thing. You know, we're rolling right now, and it's a good thing we got something good going with our pitching, defense, and offensively, and it's something we can't get away from. You know, we came up here to win this thing. We didn't come up here to have a good time. It's been lots of good times for the Aggies, the only team here in Omaha to win their Super Regional on the road. These road warriors have road trip via the big bat as the hitting has come around at the perfect time. Ask FSU, who saw A&M score 11 runs in its decisive game. You know, offensively, we're based on strength and speed. The two guys at the top of the order make us go and Tyler Naquin and Cray Bratson, but really the last you know, three hitters in our lineup the last month have been really what's turned us up. But every ball game's a different ball game. You know, it's a new day, you know, new pitcher, new, you know, new lineup you're facing. So, uh, you know, you're not guaranteed the next day, so you just get after it every single day and grind. Tyler Naquin leads this Aggie attack. In fact, he led the nation in hits, but the Big 12 Player of the Year knows AM has punched its Omaha ticket with its pitching as well. And what a resurgent staff it's been. After losing its ace John Stilson to a torn labrum at the conference tourney, the Aggie hurlers haven't blinked as starters Michael Waka and Ross Stripling have combined for an 8 0 record this postseason. Actually, I think it's it's kind of motivated us a little bit. You know, we knew when he went down, we were, everyone was going to have to step up our bullpen and even our hitters. And so far, we've done that. You know, we've we played really well in the postseason. So with Texas A&M, you get the idea. The pitching is there, and it appears the hitting is too. Having them both could give the Aggies its first baseball national title in school history. Uh, we got the pitching, we got defense, and we got an offense that I think the and, and our mentality that goes along with that. You know, our, we're we're so aggressive in our toughness that everything that goes along with just making every pitch and making sure every pitch is a strike and playing solid defense and making taking care of the little things. We're just as talented as any other team in this group and you know I think every every team here has got a chance to win a national championship. It's just a matter of getting a key hit, making a big play, somebody stepping up on the mound and you know somebody continuing to stay hot. Staying hot the mission for Texas A&M. That's been the case the past few weeks but the Aggies also realize anything can happen out here in Omaha. Well it's time to jump from one CST team to another How about those top seeded Virginia Cavs. Paul Boron has their story. Mike much was made when the new bats were introduced in college baseball that the long ball would disappear from the college game. Well Virginia took that to the extreme hitting only 24 home runs all season long. But just because the Cavs don't go deep doesn't mean they can't score. Well, I tell you, we have a really tough offensive club. We can score runs throughout our lineup, uh, one through nine. We got a lot of guys that are tough outs. We don't strike out much, and we put a lot of pressure on the other club. And if you do that through nine innings, you're going to have a chance to win. Uh, we've had an approach where you know we just try to get guys on base. We try to get the leadoff guy on every inning. Uh, we try to move them over and basically play a little kind of a small ball, a little hit and run action. And, you know, we've had guys that just come up and, and make clutch hits and, you know, gotten the job done for us, and that's why we've been so successful. We uh, take take advantage of our opportunities, and, uh, you know, if we get a guy on, we might bunt him over, might hit and run, you know, and, you know, just try to get runners in scoring positions, and, uh, you know, we come up with a lot of clutch hits. That approach has made the Cavaliers one of the top run-scoring teams in the country, but in reality, they don't need to score much because Virginia's pitching is lights out leading the country with a minuscule 2.26 ERA. Guys fulfill their roles to the best of their ability. You know, we have a lot of guys that are asked to do special things, play matchup specialists, come in and get, you know, one or two guys out, and they do that 120% every time. They're not concerned about themselves. They're just concerned about um, fulfilling their role to give our team the best chance to win. Our pitching staff is one of the best in the entire country, and it's because we've pitched with uh, consistency all year long. We've gotten great starts and, and do some really good things out of the bullpen. So great pitching and timely hitting have brought the Cavs back to Omaha for just the second time in school history. And while the 2009 team was good, 
this team believes they are better suited for success. Well, when we came here in 2009, uh, you know, it was a new experience. This is the first time uh, Virginia baseball has ever been to the College World Series. So anytime you accomplish something for the first time, it's new, it's exciting things. You know, half of our team now has returned for the second time, and they have a better understanding of uh, what it takes to be successful here. We have a handful of guys, probably seven or eight guys, that have uh, experienced this. You know, this is a... Uh, this is a part of the season that not too many people um, can have experience in. And so I think it's, uh, it's quality to have a lot of starters that uh, can relate to it. And um, I think that's going to benefit us in the end. I think uh, my freshman year we were, you know, just kind of thought we reached our goal by getting here. And uh, I think this year it's, it's more of a goal to, to succeed when you're here, not necessarily just get here. So they are more seasoned and they have an extraordinary ball club that lost just 10 times all season. But the Cavs have one more advantage here in Omaha the stadium. TD Ameritrade Park has the exact same dimensions as Davenport Field back in Charlottesville. It happens to be that the dimensions are identical to our ballpark in Charlottesville and as were the dimensions in Rosenblatt. So our players understand uh, what it takes to be successful in a ballpark of, uh, of this, these dimensions. They are, they are. So, uh, you know, we feel like we're right at home. <laughs> On Monday, Virginia dispensed of one California team, Cal Irvine, in dramatic fashion at the Super Regionals. On Sunday, they get another California team, these California Golden Bears. In Omaha, Paul Boron for CST Tonight.